Good evening, everyone. Tonight I'd like to show you how you can practice both the Chopin Winter Wind Etude and the Bach Prelude Number 21 in the same way because it all goes down to balance and understanding balance and the use of the arm weight to produce the tone and to have each short note totally equal to the one beside it. A dear friend of mine, Natalie Coriati, has made me abundantly aware of how important it is to have them exactly the same length. And you've got 32, 30 seconds in that Bach prelude in one bar. And in the Chopin etude, you've got those 16th notes for six of them in each quarter. So if you can have the analogy that was used by this person on the internet, on the YouTube channel, of the ping pong ball in a glass of water. It's a very good analogy because it gives you the use of the finger, what it's doing, pressing the key down, along with the use of the drop of your weight. You have to have both. The weight is the origin of the tones. You have to be able to release on the way up and dive right through to the floor. So his analogy goes like this. He's got a glass of water. Now he had a ping pong ball I don't have a book, ping pong ball, but I put another rubber ball in there, if you can see it, in the glass of water. The finger is basically firm enough to be able to press that ball down into the water, and it comes back. I feel the weight of the, the ball pushing back at me. So that's the, the, the weight of the key pushing back at me, because as he points out, if you, the key is just a teeter-totter. It, it teeter-totters on the balance rail goes back in behind there, and on the far end of the teeter-totter is the weight of the whippin and the hammer. And that's what you're tossing up into the wire when you dive through to the floor at this end. So he says if, the, if it's a child, you could say, well, that child has its best friend sitting on the other end of the teeter-totter. So when he comes down with his weight, when he presses that ball down in the water, he presses the key down, diving right through to the floor, coming, he, this man doesn't talk about that part, but you have to use the dead weight as the origin of the tone to have a nice, warm, round, secure tone. So, and it's going to be soft. It's not so quiet that you're going to have ghost notes, but you have to be able to play quietly or heavy. And you have to fine-tune the balance. So when you can dive right through to the floor and at the same time have that limpid wrist and a totally rotational free wrist this way and a bicycle wheel going up and down the keyboard, You'll understand why in a minute, because of the spokes. You've got to be able to feel that you're right over, you're, you're, you're aware of your whole body right from your feet and your seat, and you're going to be sitting tall and leaning forward, and think of being tossed up in the air, and as it dives, as the weight, as gravity drops you down through to the floor, you want to be able to press that key down, so with a movable wrist, totally movable wrist, so if I can go. Each, each key has to be a balance. And I can have a little bit more snap if I want to bring a, more of a ring to the sound, but it's still a movable wrist. So when I can have that, if I can think of when it's five finger exercise or whatever they like. If I can think of turning a doorknob or unscrewing and screwing a light bulb, it's just that freedom of shaking like that. At the same time as you're that free and the finger is pressing the key down and the weight is the origin of the tone and you're balanced on the tip of the finger. You see, a child learns to stand first, hangs onto the crib and is standing and then lets go and can still stand. That's not the same thing total number of muscles as he would fine tune to be able to walk on a beam that's four inches wide from one foot to another, let alone just walk on the floor. And then, or if it was a tightrope from the top of one skyscraper to another, you have to even fine tune the muscles even that much more. So you have to start slow in your practice. So if I can take the winter wind and go that slow, I'm sitting right in front of the middle of the piano, but I'm free to be able to move my weight from my seat on my seat over to the right or over to the left, lean forward, arms dropped, lift tall, right up over the keys. Think of the glass of water. The finger's gonna press the ball down into the water 
from the knuckle, from your main arch. Things happen down from the main arch. But then you have to have this freedom of rotation in the wrist. So if I go slow, one, one, two, three, three. See? That piece is the chromatic scale every second note. Every second note, I guess the first, third, and fifth are chromatic, but second and fourth, and so on, it be, it's a broken A minor triad, so. so but I want to bring it at the top. So I've got to get up over it with the weight and draw up and snap toward me with the top finger and rotate like that, pivot. be as steady as says marching left right left right left right you see it's the time that you're on that key that's where you think of a bicycle wheel and the spokes the fingers are like the spokes of the bicycle wheel and each one gets to take the full weight of your body as it rotates to that point in the wheels rotation around that hub Set the metronome, for example, like that. One, two, three, four. Say so left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. So slow that you can hear yourself saying those words, left, right, left, right, and know that you're not getting any faster, so that it's not becoming left, right, left, right, and, and scrunching and making it uneven. A lot, a lot of the beauty of the emotion of a piece of music is written into it if you time it steady. So you have to steady, keep it steady to begin with. So if I do the Bach Prelude, it's 32, 30 seconds in every bar. So groups of four, six, four, 30 seconds, say, is one eight. So one, two, three, the ball, and each finger is pressing down like that. One, touching the keys. When you go fast, you don't have time to lift the fingers. And when you play quietly, you don't want to lift the fingers. You want to be touching the keys. And when you want to go really fast, you want to be touching the keys, just like you do when you play quietly. You don't want a big gap in there that's going to make a bump. So. <laughs>
that gives you some ideas on how to do constructive practice. You can't run before you can walk, and you can't walk before you can stand. So you've got to be able to stand on that one key. Know what caused the standing. Know what muscles you use to bring you into that standing position. Realize with like the glass of water, with the ball, the ping pong ball, in, that rubber ball, you're pressing down, and you feel a key, the weight of the key as you press down, pushing back at you. And because you're not stopping in the wrist, the wrist is movable, and you're diving right through to the floor slowly, you want the key to go down slowly. You can go faster if you want to build the strength of the independent finger. I mean faster finger, but I don't mean faster from one note to the next. If you get that rotation, like a doorknob or ro rotating a doorknob or shaking it, it's just a shaking action. Unscrewing the light bulb, screwing it back in. You want it here, the top one, then have a, more of a snap towards your stomach, but it's still movable. But each individual note is a balance. Imagine each individual note, you're standing on, on, a, on a beam. Uh, like a four inch beam or you're standing on the tightrope that's between the tops of the two skyscrapers. You've got to fine tune that balance and then shorten the time between one step and the next. But when you can use the wheel, an image of a wheel, like a, there's, you can have balloon tires on a bicycle. Think of the spokes and each finger is a spoke. And when you rotate that to the next note, you're on the next spoke, so that's the next finger, and then the next, and the next. So each one takes the weight in that way and supports it in the balance on the rubber of the wheel. And the rubber of the ball is what you're pressing against with your finger to lift the weight. If the child is on the other end of the teeter-totter, the guy, the boy's best friend is on the other end of the teeter-totter, when he lifts, he lifts the, his friend up like that. So. Lots of fun to practice like that and you're not wasting your time because you're hearing every note and preparing for the next note and you're not stumbling and scrunching notes together. You're keeping a steady pulse and a steady rhythm just as the metronome does. So I hope that gives you some ideas on how to do some constructive practice in both of those pieces. They're well worth working on. Have a good night now. Bye-bye.